Okay, Monday, 25th of November, 2024. So Adrian's daily vlog, sharing smart stuff men should know. Money Monday, Bitcoin and well, the rest of the stuff. Never sell your Bitcoin, but do what instead? Something smarter, something better? Now people talk about how you should never sell your Bitcoin in general. It makes sense mathematically, because then you have to, if you want to buy back at a later stage, the price will be a lot higher. Let's say you sell in January 2020, and then you want to buy back in January 2025. The price has gone up since then. So it's harder to get back to that same level of Satoshis as before. So you wouldn't want to sell, because it's going to get harder to, to build the portfolio back up. Makes sense. But then do what instead? Because you have all this liquidity in Bitcoin. You have all this cash. You buy a thousand, let's say, and today's price is say hundred thousand, whatever, two hundred thousand. Pick a large number. Then you then you have this liquidity, this, this purchasing power, this inflation boosting purchasing power. Wow, amazing, great, good trade. Okay, but if you follow that same principle of never sell, what do you do? How do you access that liquidity? What can you do with it? What could you do with it? What should you do with it? Well, as an adult, do what you want. That's important. But I did a video, I did some videos about this in the past, actually. Uh, Bitcoin Maxi, but something akin to that. You have all this liquidity and you want to spend it. You want to access the liquidity to buy nice things. You no, know, nice food, nice clothes, go places, have a nice, have a nice lifestyle. Because you could say you earned it because you hodled, you bought more, you studied more, you persevered, which is great. You know, you're rewarding yourself very you know, pragmatically. Okay, nice. But then you say, well, never sell it. So how do I access that liquidity? How do I, how do I, how do I turn Bitcoin and Satoshis on a screen into steak, into food, into a house, into clothes, you name it, a car, anything, to have a better life? So then you could say, well, we'll go to El Salvador and you can spend it tax free, you know, it's legal tender, great, it's priceless. Or maybe you could say, use this collateral, whatever with a third party, very good, very good. Yeah, or hit Bitcoin hardware store, very nice. And uh, we could say, well, okay, we could stake it in some way. You use it as you use it to generate yield in some fashion, and then for live off the interest. Great, especially if the yield is Bitcoin denominated. Very smart. Okay. Or we could see what other people are doing. So let's say um, MicroStrategy or BlackRock, and you see these other institutions, businesses that are using it in some fashion and building on the technology, building on it to do their own kind of thing with that tech. Because I'm pretty sure at some point, someone in, someone in my um, micro strategy years ago said, right, we have all this Bitcoin, what, what are we gonna do with it? If we're never gonna sell it, same with El Salvador, the government here. If all this Bitcoin, we can see their wallet, it's growing, buying more and more, what are, you, what are you gonna do with it? What are you gonna do with all this liquidity? Okay, great. So then you could say, well, maybe you want to use that Bitcoin to have something better, to build on it in some fashion. If you're never gonna sell it, you could use it as collateral by all means, a loan. Or if you do sell it, it you will have capital gains. Or if you're here, there's no capital gains here. It's just, just transactions as usual. Uh, or, um, again, stake it and have some, have some yield on it. Great. Especially if the market is getting, as the market is getting higher and higher, the market is getting deeper. Great. Or build on top of it, do something with it like what MicroStrategy is doing. And then like, say what Big, um, BlackRock have done, where they're just basically getting the fees from it, hodling for people, their customers, and getting a fee. And what MicroStrategy is doing, it, doing with it with regards to the volatility and the options and their, their stock. Great, a Bitcoin oil refinery, so to speak, amazing. I'm pretty sure places like Microsoft would have this same discussion as well. they would be thinking, if you're gonna buy it, what are you gonna do with it? What's gonna happen with it? What are you gonna do with it? And Apple will have the same discussion as well. And they'll probably integrate it somehow into the Apple Pay. Great. If, the, if people are never gonna sell it, what are they gonna do with it to access the liquidity, to earn off it, to, to earn more Satoshis? How are you going to square the circle of, you've got all this purchasing power, but you want steak. You want a nice car. You want a nice house. Okay, great. So what are you gonna do? Hmm, fair enough. Okay, now, and we're seeing that already. We're seeing these companies doing it. And then you can go one step further. And remember how there was talk that MicroStrategy outperformed Bitcoin in a certain time frame. Interesting. I have a hunch then, as more companies are using Bitcoin in some fashion on a Bitcoin standard, 
using the technology in some fashion to build on it, to do stuff with it in their own technique, in their own method, in their own specialization. All right, fair enough. In their own way. Okay, then we're gonna see more companies that are going to outperform Bitcoin because it's Bitcoin and something else. The, if Bitcoin is a new hurdle rate, they're going to be Bitcoin and something else. They're going to be using it. They're going to be riding that fastest horse in the race. They're going to be riding it and doing other stuff with it. So I think in the future, I won't be surprised, 15, 30 years from now, there'll be more companies, countries, you name it, that are outpay, outperforming Bitcoin because they're doing something with it. Not just hodling it and selling it and buying here and gone tomorrow. Fair enough, they're doing and building with it. They're expanding on the technology. They're doing something with it. And... They're use that, using it in some way, they're utilizing it in their own unique way. I'm sure Facebook in the year, in the years to come, will be using it in some extremely unique way in their own ecosystem. Apple, all I can imagine is in, integrate and create, integrate it with Apple Pay and create their own unique Apple Bitcoin wallet, orange Apple wallet, something like that, you know. I'm pretty sure. Because then you could say, if they don't want to sell Bitcoin, because they're going to hodl it, because they realize intrinsically it's going to go more higher in value, so therefore it's going to be harder to get back the same number of Satoshis. So what are they going to do? Well, they're going to find some way to get more Satoshis in general. Like, you know, an in interest-bearing account that is denoted in Satoshis. Amazing, great. Something akin to that. They're going to do something so they can earn more Satoshis with the current Satoshis they currently have. And as the price goes higher and higher, I think it'll be more and more viable to do these kind of unique strategies because the markets get deeper and deeper. And if the interest rates, the same interest growth, for example, in the business is the same or whatever, but you're getting more and more Satoshis, then they're increasing in purchasing power and it's only going to get better and better. Makes sense. Makes sense. And what am I overlooking? I'm very curious in this. What am I missing? What am I, what am I overlooking with this? Because if the idea is never sell, but what are you going to do with the Bitcoin? You have to do, well, you don't have to do anything with the Bitcoin in terms of estate planning, you leave it there, hodl for the next decade, next century, pass it on to the next generation. That's fine. But my fundamental thought is, how do you square the circle of, I have this Bitcoin, I have this liquidity, but I'm living in a hovel. I, I'm, I'm, I have rags. I, I, don't eat, I, don't, I eat nothing. I eat next to nothing. But I'm, you know, I got $99,000 of unrealized gains. It's amazing. So you've got cash. You've got a winning trade. That's unequivocal undeniable but how do you square the circle of never selling it and then basically eating how do you survive because then you could say as i mentioned in previous videos what's more valuable than bitcoin find those situations and scenarios of to sell the bitcoin to justify the bitcoin it's it's going to be health things it's going to be life things it's going to be time things health health and time because time is more valuable time is more scarce and health have all the bitcoin in the world but if you've got poor health how are you going to enjoy it how are you going to hodl more how are you going to enjoy your whatever and you could say also, I, I struggled and I went through hardship to hodl this and I want to have a nice lifestyle. Or I want to go to the gym and start exercising and have a, have a personal trainer. Okay, how are you going to afford those things? Hmm, fair enough. It's just that, that thought process. And I think people will be using it on top of the current existing, will use the technology in some way to build stuff, to do stuff, to achieve stuff, to create stuff. Just how um, MicroStrategy are, just how BlackRock are, and just how other people and countries will be in the future and then you can also say just how the government of, of El Salvador are or will in the future as well things like that yeah but otherwise Adrian's daily vlog sharing smart stuff mentioned now subscribe for more you will see me tomorrow